Hey there, what's up everybody? So in this world we have many types of moth lovers and all of them tend to specialize in one or two families of moths that I like that they like the best. Me, however, I'm rather the type of generalist that cannot make up his mind and really loves all types and all sorts of moths. And today we are going to make a video that will be appreciated by the tiger moth community, aka the people who study Arctinae. And here we have a project that I'm currently working on, which is raising um, the St. Lawrence tiger moth, Platarctia parthenos, in captivity. So far it has been a stunning success. Here we have one rearing container. And, well, if we just take a close look in here, we can see that it's chock full of larvae, hidden behind the crevices in their food plants. Some of them are even in the process of shedding their skins again to the sixth instar. And so far I've been raising them with great success and little losses. So I'm really happy for that. However, there is one major challenge ahead of me. And that is overwintering this species. Because in the wild, these caterpillars, they want to overwinter, uh, in fact, twice. It has a life cycle that takes two years to complete, from egg to adult moth. One time, they overwinter in the fifth instar. And the second time, they overwinter in the final or eighth instar. That's right, instar number eight. They have eight instars. Uh, however, in captivity, they scan to, they tend to skip these uh, overwintering phases, and the reason for that is um, basically because it's it's triggered by temperature. When it gets too cold, the caterpillars go into hiding, and um, they will become dormant for a long time and will wait until spring. So this is also triggered by day length and light intensity. And here is just one rearing container of them. If you thought it was everything, I have multiple cont containers of them. Let's take a look in here, for example. <clears throat> and it really differs a lot per species. Um, if you can skip their overwintering or not. If you follow my YouTube channel, you know I have some experience with tiger moths and uh, I've already bred a fair amount of species. And some of them overwinter in the wild, but will not really bother to overwinter in captivity if you just keep them warm. That means that they do not have an obligate diapause. And that it's basically an optional overwintering, which is triggered by cold. But some also have a facultative diapause. Which means it's really an obligatory overwintering that you cannot bypass in captivity. So I have not studied this species very thoroughly. It's my first experience with them. So um, I guess we will just find out if we keep going and raising them if they will want to overwinter or not. There's a chance that they will pupate soon and I will have moths this year. And there's a chance that they will stop eating and go into sleep. And that means trouble for me because that means I will have to overwinter again. And overwintering caterpillars, guys, is really hard. So, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Oh yeah, and these guys need a lot of ventilation. What I do i cover their uh, containers with some kind of legging let me put it on first it's like this stuff and i spread it over the container usually and it allows for a lot of ventilation maybe i can give a small example well here we go here's one example of it and why i do this is because it allows a lot of airflow and ventilation because the food plant of these caterpillars is dandelion and dandelion is like 99 percent water so um, it will become a dirty, rotten, moldy mess if you don't give them proper ventilation to allow the leaves to dry out instead of stay wet and rotten. Thanks for watching.